Hello, this is a short little video explaining the current macroeconomic situation uh, due to the coronavirus using the introductory macroeconomic model, uh, the arid supply, arid demand model. Now, um, the arid supply, arid demand model is a pretty simple model, but it can be quite powerful in explaining what's going on in the current economy now and also getting an idea of how policy is affecting the economy. Basically, this model divides the economy into two sides. One is the aggregate supply side, which represents the productive side of the economy. The other side of the economy is the aggregate demand side of the economy, representing all the parts of the economy that use resources. Now, this can be a really useful model because it allows you to track uh, the main macroeconomic uh, indicators that we keep track of in the economy, such as economic output, better referred to as GDP, unemployment, and inflation. Now, the general framework of the model takes this um, uh, structure where you have inflation on the vertical uh, axis, output on the horizontal axis, and you have an upward sloping aggregate supply curve representing the production side of the economy, that's really made up of the amount of labor an economy has and the amount of capital an economy has. And you also have the downward sloping aggregate demand curve, representing the, cons the consumption part of the economy, the investment side of the economy, and the government. It could also uh, include net exports, but we're going to ignore that for right now. Now, in this model of the economy, there's the idea that the economy can be at equilibrium this intersection point where aggregate supply intersects with the air demand curves, you get this equilibrium point. This equilibrium point represents the level of economic activity that is going on in any economy. The basic uh, idea here is that the amount that's produced in the economy has to also equal the amount that's consumed in the economy. This at least is how any market-based economy such as the United States operates. Now, a third piece of the model that we're going to be using in tracking what's going on with the macroeconomy is the level of potential output, or potential GDP. This can be thought of as the full employment level of output. In other words, if all your resources are being used, um, this is the total amount that you should be expected to produce in the long run. This can be thought of also as a gravitational center of the economy. When the economy gets knocked off balance, such as during a recession, the tendency of the economy is to recover back to this, uh, this point, this recover back to this point where it's utilizing all of its resources. So our whole model put together basically consists of these three pieces. The potential level of output represented in the green here, uh, the arid supply curve, representing the blue, and the arid demand curve. And when the, we have an economy displayed here, where potential output, aggregate supply, and aggregate demand all intersect in the same place, that's considered to be general equilibrium. That's sort of the ideal resting place for the economy, the full employment level for the economy. You could actually consider that the United States was pretty much at general equilibrium, full employment, before the coronavirus hit. Of course, when the coronavirus hit, it was a double shock to the economy. It caused really both sides of the arid supply, arid demand model to contract. First, um, the arid supply curve, represented in the blue here, went in because the amount of workers in the economy uh, decreased. Quite simply, people could not go to work. Uh, states had stay-at-home orders. And so you took a lot of people out of the economy, which makes it very hard for companies then to produce things. Simultaneously, there was also a reduction in aggregate demand. Uh, at first, this was caused by people not being able to spend money since businesses were closed. But as the days and weeks have gone on, the problem is workers haven't been paid, so they have cut back on their consumption. In addition, Businesses nervous about the future and wanting to hold on to the money they have have cut back on their level of investment. So the collapse in the economy that we've seen over the past couple weeks is really a double shock to the economy. 
Now, the way to understand where the economy is at now is that the economy, in, in essence, has fallen into a coma. We are technically at a recession because the intersection of arid supply and arid demand are real output uh, level of the economy, what the economy is actually producing, is below its potential. We have an awful lot of resources that are not being used right now because they can't be used. So technically the economy is in a recession. And this recession is really the result of the public health policies that have frozen the economy at a lower level of economic activity. Normally, the economy would, in a recession, recover. Uh, adjustments in wages, adjustments in prices, adjustment in business structure would allow the economy to move back out to potential output, move back out towards general equilibrium. Unfortunately, all of that has been frozen in place. Those adjustments cannot happen right now because of the public health emergency that we're living through. So, the situation we find ourselves in is we're in a recession, but we're locked there. And as a point of judgment, this is probably essentially a good thing. We do want our workers to stay home because that will help us get through this public health emergency that we're going through right now. But, needless to say, we cannot expect the economy to function normally for the foreseeable future. And this is why the government has stepped in with a very, very large uh, stimulus uh, pro uh, program, right? The $2 trillion that they enacted last week. And also why the Federal Reserve has stepped in to try to flood uh, financial markets with cash or liquidity to basically keep, allow the economy to live through this uh, coma that it's in. The idea of government policy has in essence been to stabilize the arid supply curve and the arid demand curve in its current place. Not really to help push the economy back out, but just to allow the economy to stay where it is right now. For example, government loan programs have allowed businesses to maintain their organization. This supports arid supply. The arid supply curve is not contracting anymore because businesses are at least able to maintain their current sort of status quo um, and it allows the potential level of output to maintain its current position. So, and I'll get back to that in a minute because that will help an awful lot in the recovery. In addition, uh, the government funding, especially uh, increased unemployment benefits, but also the, uh, the loans to companies, has basically taken the place of um, where workers would normally get their wages. In essence, the government is paying the people's wages, and this is a way to really maintain uh, the arid demand, or the consumption part of aggregate demand, <clears throat> and allows us to at least live at this current lower level for the time being, and hopefully maybe um, prepare us for a recovery on the other side. Now, a big question in all of this is how long it's going to go on. Nobody really knows, and so policymakers have to be making decisions based on really an unknown time scale. What they are trying to avoid at all costs right now is the collapse of potential output, having that full employment level of output actually go down. Even though we're not at that level right now, the problem is if businesses start to fail, if it becomes much harder for businesses to maintain their organization. The problem is they'll go bankrupt and this will create a situation where the workers who are currently unemployed or laid off will now not have any sort of job to go to when the recovery actually begins. So the idea of extending unemployment benefits for at least four months and providing businesses with extensive loans to cover them through the next four months is to keep the level of potential output from collapsing. Now there's going to be a certain amount of collapse anyway, but if we can minimize that impact, um, the easier it will be for the economy to recover. If the level of potential output does collapse, if we lose an awful lot of business organization, that's when we actually start to worry about sinking into a depression. Basically what would happen is the level of general equilibrium in the country would be lower and there would be no good way to move the economy back out in the long run. Ideally, 
um, the policies that we're enacting and hopefully will enact in the future will allow for a recovery after um, the crisis has passed. Hopefully, um, if businesses are able to maintain their organizational structure for the next couple months, uh, the workers will be able to go back to their jobs that they had previously to the, or before the crisis, and that will help aggregate supply push back out again. Also, hopefully, um, consumers will be able to get out back out there spending money, and in business investment will also pick up again, and that will push out aggregate demand. Now, a key piece to this action will be having both aggregate supply and aggregate demand go out simultaneously. And the logic of having them move simultaneously is if workers feel that they can uh, quickly return to their jobs, well clearly they'll be more willing to increase their consumption spending when all this is over. And if businesses are confident that um, there'll be more business opportunities when this is over, they'll also increase their investment. So this is kind of the ideal situation that we're looking for once we can actually start talking about recovery, which will hopefully be sooner rather than later.